like you know ultimate non-dual reality versus living experience in material reality let's go to page 75 and you know these are formed as like questions and answers so people are asking the Rinpoche these questions so people are thinking that from the perspective of ultimate truth our mind and the deity are inseparable let me stop here so the deity is used when you know like translate tibetan into english but i actually think that the tibetan idea of deity it is, it is not really at the ultimate level at least not the same as the westerners perception of a deity so the westerners perception of a deity is typically i mean at the most like mundane levels it's this outside entity separated from the supplicant that somebody prays to in order to make their life better right but in the Tibetan view, you know, the deity is really a visually presented manifestation of ultimate reality via the conduit of the dualistic human mind. And this is presented utilizing various cultural symbols, depending on what the given human being experiencing the deity has been exposed to or inoculated with in his or her life. So, um, you know, it's actually quite interesting. I just see something on my wall right now. Um, Pallas Athena or Minerva, she's the ancient Greek goddess of wisdom handicraft, um, strategy and warfare, you know? Also like wisdom, right? But like strategic warfare, strategic wisdom. And I actually feel that Athena is sort of like the Hellenic Tara, right? So at the ultimate level, these beings are not separate from us, right? In ultimate reality, but we perceive them as separate from us because we live in this material reality which is a constant state of subject object duality right you know what i mean so um keeping this in mind somebody's asking so if, if ultimate truth our mind and the deity is inseparable the prayer kind of lacks meaning like we're calling to ourselves for help like what is the value of such a view but the rinpoche is saying um you know, from ultimate reality, there is neither suffering nor fear. And we, in reality, what appears now as suffering, fear, and danger is nothing else but a manifestation of our mind. You know, but it is necessary to differentiate between the realization of non-duality and the present state in which all our experience is lived in, which is a constant subject-object duality. So keeping in mind ultimate reality, but knowing that we are in this kind of fallen state, and um, don't quote me on this, but um, my friend Pat, who knows a lot about um, Hellenic polytheism because he's a Hellenic polytheist, and my friend Alfie, who's also very um, well, well read on that, he's more on the Orphic hymns and things like that, um, regardless, this is all Hellenic. Um, they were telling me, like, you know, when you're mad, that's Aries. You know, when you're feeling in love, that's Venus. So I, I, it's interesting that at the, I guess, ultimate reality level or at like a higher level of philosophical understanding, even the Greeks understood or had a similar view to the Tibetans where at the ultimate level, we really aren't actually separate from the deity, you know?